I applied to like 50 jobs over the space of six months. I got rejected from all of them, but of my head, I was like, this is going to be like my story. <laughs> She's a full producer who's done amazing work like uh, Face of Oceana. She's just done one with a lecture from the, the, the rap and hip hop artist called The Movement, produced um, the last time with Zombie as well. The founder and the creator of a card game called La Langa. What comments do people say in passing to Pacific Islanders that are quite insulting? The heart of the work that I do, I love to do, is like tell Pacific stories. Mandate. Welcome to Mandate, where we never gave fresh perspectives and nothing is off the table. Tonight's guest is from Dharma Gimakuru from Mangere 275. She's an amazing talent. She's a, I guess you could say, a film producer. Film producer who's done amazing work in terms of a lot of the films and documentaries that she's done. Now, you'll know her from several of her work, like uh, Face of Oceana. Also started an online platform called Plantation Conversations. And also one that was really, um, I think, close to my heart was I am still here in terms of uh, our Pacific people in uh, Central Auckland and more so in Ponsonby. But also she's an amazing, uh, oh, oh, I might just add as well, just recently she's done, uh, produced um, The Last Time One Zo uh, Zombie as well. And even more recently, she does also uh, video clips, music video clips. She's just done one called The Lecture from the, 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 the amazing rap and hip hop artist called The Movement. And so check that out, please, if you haven't already. And also she's quite entrepreneurial. Uh, she has done, and she's the founder and the creator of a card game, Pacifica card game called La Langa. So please put your hands together for the lovely and talented Therese Laulu. Oh, wow, that was an um, uh, intro. Thank you so much. I feel really honoured to um, be here and share space with you all. Um, yeah, it's a privilege. Oh, awesome, awesome. No, no, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us at the table tonight. And so I guess we can start the ball rolling, um, sis, because it is a privilege. The work that you're doing, uh, what that you do and are doing is amazing. And so often, like I think we had a bit of a chat just out there just early on, that often people when they're doing films or documentaries, people often think about the directors or the cast or the actors. And often sometimes it's the, the producer is not kind of like, oh, kind of mentioned um, often. And so for you as, as a producer in terms of film and documentary or docos, uh, what is it? What, what is it? Because people might think, what is a producer? What does a producer do? So tell us, enlighten us, what is it about a producer and what do you do? Yeah, no, that's um, that's a great question. I, it's a question that like a lot of people always ask. Because they're like, we know what a director does. We don't really know what a producer does. Um, which is so funny because it's like, I feel like a producer uh, kind of like organises like everything around the shoot. Um, but depending on the producer, they can also be like involved in like the creative talks in the beginning, um, pre-shooting and as well, like some producers jump in to give feedback in the edit as well. So they're kind of like, Oh, and they also like help with like marketing at the end when they're like trying to figure out how to get the film out to places. They do a lot of like around behind the scene work and then a bit of like, not a bit, like a lot of, um, they wear a lot of different hats, yeah. It's awesome. Because it is, you, you're quite hands on as well you look, in terms of looking for locations. Yeah. Uh, even uh, looking for, even the casting as well. Um, you, yeah. You can do that. You, yeah, it really d kind of depends on like the relationship that they have with the director and the writer, I guess. But um, yeah, that relationship between the director, writer and producer is like super important when it comes to creating a project or thing. Like, you guys all need to meet and make sure that you guys, um, you know, um, work together really well as a team. It's cool, so, yeah. it's cool. Kind of like the glue you kind of make, I think... Um, I guess you could say that it's kind of like you bring it, you bring the the vision to life. Uh, often, is it in terms of the director? Uh, but you kind of piece these things together and bring it to life with everyone kind of working together as a, as a unit. Yeah, I feel like the producer is the one that kind of um, gets like crews on people, um, finds like different members in the crew that will make the film. Usually, that's their job. So yeah, kind of like piecing together people, but also like super collaborative. Um, with the director and the writer, yeah. Cool, awesome. You, um, <clears throat> excuse me, just thinking about how 
you know, in performing arts and and that there's quite a few of our people that get into acting and things like that. Yeah. Do you see many people in terms of Pacifica producers? And if not, I don't know, is there more of them coming through recently? Do you see more and more of them as you go? Honestly, or? we need we need more Pacifica producers. Like, um, I'd love to have more um, Pacifica people behind the camera um, controlling the narrative of like stories, um, particularly stories surrounding us. I think that's super important. Um, yeah, I don't think there's like too many. I mean, there is like you know, great Basfika producers, but we need more. And yeah, because mm, there's it's often. Always- this idea of like Pacific people being great storytellers mm. and so typically you think of like the director and the actor but um, is there like I'm just thinking like what are the biggest hurdles or what skills do our people bring that can make them quite unique as producers mm. do you know what I always thought that like um, like organising a kongai or like um, running like if you did Sunday school and you did the program and you ran that, like I always feel like those are great um, skills that can translate into being a producer. Um, I just think that the hard thing is um, with like producing, a lot of them want to, there's not really many ops sometimes and a lot of people want like experienced producers um, which comes down to the hard like kind of cycle of okay, so if you want experience, like people with experience, how do they get experience if like no one's giving it out? If, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I feel like that's kind of a kind of cycle. But I mean, if you're like so keen and you love film and you want to like get into it and stuff, there's like great um, groups like Pacific Island Screen Artists Bisa, who are doing the most to bring a lot of these like young emerging um, people from all walks and all ages of life through to the film industry, producers, writers, directors, and I feel like they're really changing the game um, for Pacifica screen artists. Yeah. That's some, um, man, super proud of what the projects you're part of and uh, – the work that you do and you know just hearing you um say that we need more people um more pacifica in these spaces why is it important for you sis? especially the projects that you've been a part of why is it so important for us to tell our stories mm. um a lot of the projects that i've been on or well, actually all of them are to do with like pacifica people and are like pacifica stories so it's definitely um i mean the heart of the work that I do I love to do is like tell Pacific stories and from like those experiences I've I think it's great that I've worked with a lot of the same people but in many ways I see that as also um kind of not a good thing because it means that a lot of the stories that gets put out are from a certain perspective and from a certain lens but we need like multiple different lenses from multiple different um, community, I mean groups within the Basfika community. And that's why it's super important to have more Basfika story, um, storytellers come through, more Basfika producers, because it means that we can get more diversity in stories that are told by us for us. Mm. Yeah. And because for a long time our stories haven't been told and yeah. they've sort of been shunned away or um, there's always um, like the mainstream media always have their sort of perspective and it's always like a negative light on us but having um, people tell our stories from a positive um, lens or telling it from our lens it, it sort of widens the the scope and and sort of changes some um like some thinking mm. and so it's cool that um we're getting more of our stories out there but i really like what you're saying there need more of us out there so well done to the work you're doing sis because 
me. Thank you. It's yeah. exactly like you guys do with doing mandate podcasts, like telling stories on, you know, like all these really cool bus speaker people. That's, yeah, storytelling. Like, I love the work that you guys are doing. Oh, thank yeah. you. Thank you. It's funny. You've got to make our own cards. And <laughs> 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 this just made me think about. Um, <clears throat> Like we've talked a little bit in, uh, previously about like things like diversity and um, I always just think, and I'm just thinking aloud here because I'm still trying to understand like my own perspective on it, but like are there examples that come to mind? And this is open question to all, but when you think about like Pacific stories, ha have there ever been, has there been a time or an example where someone's tried to tell a Pacific story that has, hasn't been uh, from a Pacifica perspective, but they've tried to tell a Pacifica story, and and if they have, do you think it's better that someone tries to tell it, even if they're not telling it right, or do you think it's best to not touch it until the right people are behind Ooh. the story? Ooh. Ooh. And that's open to, to everyone on the table. Why are you making us think, man? I don't know, because I, <laughs> I, I can't think of an example, but I was just thinking, like, is there an example of someone that's tried to do something and it's kind of backfired or hasn't been... I think yeah, a, lot of, a lot of people, obviously in Hollywood, they, they've been trying to do... Like you think of Moana mm. and the story are based on, obviously, Pacifica Polynesia, and yet most of the people are involved in the back, background or the back of the scenes, behind the scenes... A lot of them will be not obviously American, um, bilingual or, or white Americans. So I think it's depending on, on how it's received and how it's delivered. I think if it's delivered in a good in a good from a good place or good heart in terms of actually delivering the story and making sure that it's authentic or true to the story, then maybe there could be some, okay, maybe it's, it's, it's still good. It's still coming across that, hey, this is about Polynesia or Pacific. But if it's if they take the story... I know often some people have, have experienced that people take a story and then they change the whole storyline and they just mix it up and say, hey, this is not even become westernized. This is not even about Polynesia now. So they've been, uh, yeah, I think if, if it's come from a, from a good place, from a good heart, then maybe they can get away with it. Um, but I don't know. That's just my opinion. Did you think they did a good job with Mon? Actually, uh, no. I didn't <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It came from a good place. I was hoping it came from a good place. If it didn't come from a good place, and I man, just yeah, just it's just play the longer. It's funny you mentioned that because then I was like, oh, if Moana was poorly received, like, would your opinion change? Like, if it was received well, does that affect how you perceive Moana as a story of Pacific people or a Pacific story? Mm. Sorry. What do you think? What do you think, What do you think, Therese? Um, nah, I feel like you're taking up space that isn't yours. You know, like there's, a, you have your own stories. Tell them, and I was just, I mean, the for example, um, the lecture, I just like kind of felt like that whole journey was so special and it was so like authentic because movement was speaking from his own experiences and it remind and Samson could connect to that because he went through the same thing and it reminded me a lot of like my guy cousins and their relationships with their fathers and I feel like if someone who didn't live through those experiences and someone that came outside like say they were non bus figure and they try to tell the story I don't think they would be able to do it justice or will be able to pick up like the nuances of the story that are actually so important um that's kind of why I feel like it's so important um mm -hmm. if it's not your story to just make like move like move aside and make space for those whose stories that 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 they belong to, yeah. That's Sorry, cool. no, 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 no. So cool. just like, I, think cool. I, think, I think it's cool. I think it's I think it's absolutely. I think you, what you're saying is right, but I think the in terms of you're right. I think that's why we need more people like yourself and the Pisa, because if our stories are not told, and, and if the people who who are the ones who the the gatekeep or not gatekeep or the protectors of the story or mm. or hold the story, they need they, we need more of us to to tell our story. If we're not gonna 
tell a story or we're not going to be the individuals or the people to step in that space and tell a story, it's going to be very hard. And then mm. people go, oh, you know, well, you're not going to do the story. So we'll just, we'll, we'll do your story because you're not doing your story. And so uh, this was important to have people like yourself yeah. and other directors like Stella and all those people to step in, okay, okay if they're not going to do our story, we'll do our story. Yeah. But if no one steps up to the plate and says, and we're going to tell a story, then it's it's uh, we lose it, we lose it, and and, and of, of course, it's most likely they're going to tell our story, and then justice uh, and the justice and justices, they tell our story, but we we, we have the opportunity to, to hey this, uh, we missed the opportunity to tell our story, but you're absolutely right. I, yeah, I agree with what you're saying. You're right, um, but yeah. yeah, if if the story is not told by our people, then it's yeah. a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's sad. Yeah, because I mean, it's like to the tiniest thing. Like I'm not sure if you, you saw, but like in the music video um were pe the wardrobe people had brought because they're not they were in some on their tongue and but they had bought like um you know the ulas the um the red ones mm. they brought that and um they wanted to put it on to move when he was dressed as a father in his um he was like wearing a suki but me and samson were like we've never seen um dads at church wear that over like their suki awful so that we never put it on mm -hmm. but like you know small things like yeah. that like that's why i think it's so important that we have like you know like the right people, the right people tell the stories mm -hmm. yeah cool. So, that's cool. no, that's tiny cool. tiny it's cool i like that yeah. Yeah. yeah tiny details make a difference eh? yeah yeah that's a that's cool <clears throat> That's a cool like show you're wearing. What if I'm a white store? I was like, <laughs> Holly, my poly shit. And hey. <laughs> <laughs> but it just makes me think that just because a Pacific storyteller is telling a Pacific story, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna be there's gonna be a synergy. I imagine mm. that sometimes a Pacific storyteller may have ideas on how to interpret a Pacific story. So just because it's Pacific story, Pacific storyteller, that doesn't mean it's a match made in heaven. There are still some, I wouldn't say teething issues, but there must be some conversation and negotiation in terms of respecting the essence of a story. Yeah, and I, I suppose that's part of what a producer does as well in terms of helping that negotiation happen, yeah? Yeah, yeah, mm. for sure. Cool, cool. Have you found any resistance in the industry in terms of um, your age, your ethnicity, and your gender? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> just, just throw it back, throw it back. Yeah. Just throw it back. <laughs> asking all the hard questions. That, um. or, or have you felt that resistance? Good point. Yeah. But do you know what? Oh. I have, but I think one of the biggest barriers for me, and I'm just speaking on my myself and my journey, is actually going into the industry and not knowing anyone, and not and also not coming from like money, where I can fall back on my parents and be like, oh, I I need five years to become a filmmaker. Like mm -hmm. you got me. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like and. Um, not having to worry about if I fail and how that impacts like my parents that's kind of been like the biggest barrier for me and it, I haven't yeah right yeah cool and so you 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 haven't because um, I I'm thinking about all our young um, Pacifica mm. um, male and female like trying to go into spaces that they're minorities mm. but um how do they press forward but i love that this that that wasn't your biggest barrier like it, it's probably the norm now and you haven't had to worry about that like that no like for sure i've you know definitely had um you know gender being one and um also like being pacifica but um I think that like for me, like one of my like biggest barriers for me was when yeah. I was like entering and trying to get in was like not knowing anyone and also not having the resources and access to that. Cool. Yeah. I think like I, I saw it as like a privilege to be able to chase my dreams, you know, because my parents, they're migrants and, 
you know, sacrifice so much for me to be given that. And, you know, there's kind of this, like, um, heaviness when you're, like, wanting to go after what you want to do and knowing that, um, like, they sacrificed their dreams so that you could chase yours. There's, like, so much guilt surrounding that, but also it feels me to, like, want to go hard but at yeah. the same time it's also like it's um I feel like I was just talking to another creative about this but it feels like I felt like my journey was a bit slower because I was carrying a lot more weight mm -hmm. yeah but and I feel like that's a lot um the same with like a lot of Pacifica creatives that are entering the industry and they don't come from families who were filmmakers or you know whatnot True. Yeah. There, there must have been times on your journey, and perhaps even now, like I imagine coming in where, you know, there are all these factors at play, um, having the background that you have. Like, does imposter syndrome ever hit you? And are there times where you're like, hmm, this is getting, like you're starting to feel the pressure and you start to sort of second guess your place and what you do and all that sort of stuff? Yeah. Um, yes and no I think I am I feel like like me as a person I when I do get hurt with rejection for some weird reason it makes it feels me like to want to go after the word like 10 times harder and if someone tells me I can't do something that also feels me to like prove them wrong I honestly don't know why I'm like that but that's yeah, I think that has helped and worked a lot in my favour when it's come because I've had a lot of um, times when I've like been faced with like rejection and failure and also like um, where I've been told by people that um, what I want to do was like not realistic. I've been told that like a million times. I just it just bounced off me. I never listened to that because I don't know if I. I don't know where that like kind of confidence came from, <laughs> but I was just like, in my like head, I always used to like say this thing. I was like, you know, like, I feel like if you have this like kind of like fire inside of you that you want to do something and you know that you love it, then I feel like it's always meant to be for you. And so like, yeah, I kind of just like listen to that and then not care about what anyone else tells me all like even if I'm in a situation where they said no we don't believe in your ideal like you're not getting funding I still think that things will unfold in like your favor if whatever's meant for you will like never pass you you know wow. yeah and you don't know where you got that from how long have you been oh. like that have you always been like that no nah, do you know what? my dad's actually like that yeah my dad's like that He's really stubborn and the and it very like dreamy, like big dreams. Like me and my dad would just like talk about like his big dreams ever since yeah. I was young. Yeah, wow. my dad's like that. Oh, awesome! Yeah, because yeah. we've got a trained counsel. I was gonna say we can unpack that and try to figure out um, where it comes from. Like, oh. Talk about rejection and that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so much. Nah. Like, <laughs> no, but it's cool. You, you know, sometimes you don't realize like some of the stuff that our parents like drilled into us or that was a part of our life that in essence it just comes out when we're or we, it lives out in us when we're just going through our journey and yeah it's cool that you're able to recognize it your dad's a massive dreamer yeah he, uh, he <laughs> actually <laughs> is <laughs> that's so funny yeah yeah but, but it's, it's it's a cool attribute to have uh mm. in terms of being persistent and resilient especially in, in this day and age and, and especially in the industry you're in part Thank of in terms you. of film and i love it that you said it's kind of like a water off a, off, a, off a duck's back you know people will say no 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 how many no's you, you get but can you give us an example of like there's like <laughs> man they said no no said, you know what i don't care i don't give a damn i'm gonna keep going okay when it just kind of came up came to fruition he's like, yeah see it's, it's it's coming because i don't give up yeah well when i first finished because i um when i finished from uni i um applied to like i actually made a list to like 50 jobs over the space of six months 
um, and they were in film and TV. And I was like, in my head, I was so weird, like weird because I was like, I got rejected from all of them. But in my head, I was like, this is going to be like my story. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is going to be my story. Um, and I was just like, no, nah, no, nah, it's all good. But like borderline depression, all of that, like I was in a really bad state. Um, Cause I, I was like watching my dad come in from work and he worked labor. So I was like watching my dad come home from work and I was like, bro, do you know that's the worst feeling in the world? You know, if like, like for me, it was like I wasn't working and I just finished uni and I was like watching my dad and he was like exhausted. And I was like, oh, and I felt so useless. And so I was like, oh, you know what? It's all good. So I just started working like any job cause I wanted to help out. And I did for a year and I started um, saving money and I wanted to make, I had this idea where I wanted to like cover really like amazing Pacifica individuals like killing it in their own like field. I knew of um, my sister, she was studying law at the time and her tutor, his name's Dylan Asafo and he was doing his masters at Harvard. Uh, law and I think he was the only person in New Zealand that got into Harvard that year and I was like man this is so cool and why is no one talking about it so I wanted to like cover him and like three other like really cool like um amazing Pacific individuals and so anyways from the job that I was working I saved a bit of money and I hit up um Benji and um Kanan and I, I was like do you guys think this would be cool if we like shoot this blah 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 and then we shot it, made the series, and I was just like inviting everyone that I knew when we premiered it at Te Oro, and it like like 200 people had come, and I was like inviting everyone that I knew like in the media. I didn't even know them. I met like one person from TP, and I invited <laughs> I invited him, and I was like, if you know any of any media people that would love to come, please come, because I thought maybe that's how you can kind of get your foot into like the film industry is you just got to go make it yourself so I did um we did do that and they came and it was like got some really good feedback but then after that didn't hear anything else and I was like oh I thought I would be able to get a job out of this but didn't hear anything else and so I was like you know what I just went and applied um I entered the Los Angeles Asian Pacific Film Fest and I got in and it played there and then from there I kind of like got my first like kind of gig in the film industry but yeah that's kind of like my story it was like a lot of people like I got faced a lot of rejection and even after making like s stuff like s still now like it's common but I think it's all a part of the journey like I don't see it as a setback I just see it as like you're just moving along in your journey now but anyways that's kind of like how it started yeah. yeah that is that's that's, that's see, encouraging yeah, that's encouraging that's the hustle the hustle like some people like obviously other other, other individuals would have said you know what no, it's not for me i'll find it something else to do it was just not for me but you just stuck to it you actually really believed in it and, and, and believe in, in the work that you do and for okay. you to, to do that to get all these people involved and invite all these people 200 people plus people come in and watch your, your docker your film that's crazy yeah. In terms of uh, just the, the the belief, you have to really 100% believe in yourself. And I can guarantee you probably have had moments like, oh, no, gosh, I don't know if this is going to work. Uh, yeah, people have that. But you just, you, you back yourself in the hustle to do this. It's incredible. It's your story. Like you can look in the camera and I was like, hey, shame on you for not giving me the job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but hey, they, you they, probably they, don't yeah. even remember my name. Shame on you for not giving me the job. What? But, they're going to remember. But, yeah, but they're you gonna, remember they're gonna, yeah. <laughs> they're gonna, they're gonna remember you. In fact, it's, it's probably a blessing in disguise because look what you're doing now. Thank you. And so, well done, my little lover. What, what a story. Yeah. And for, for you to share it on, on this platform and on the podcast, man. Yeah, sure, yeah. sis. Because yeah. the flip Thank side you. to that is that you get your first rejection and you're like, oh, sweet Lord, oh, probably it's not meant to be. Mm. And you go keep on doing whatever you were doing before mm. and your dreams just parked. And how many of our Pasifika or young people, just people in general, like just park their dreams because of the first um, call of rejection. 
Mm. But I just love 50 applications. Yeah. Or reject that and you're pretty much going, you know what, I'll go do it myself. Yeah. I don't know. It's just like, you know when you like have that fire in you and you're like, you know that this is what you're supposed to do. Mm. I just, yeah. We need some Sorry. of that fire. Thank you for giving us some of that fire. <laughs> it was like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool, man. Thank you. Like, cool story. It is. It's a. It's a cool story. Like, like what Charles said, you said, you know what? If they're, if they're, gonna, they're not going to offer me a job, then I'm going to do it myself. And yeah. I think people need to hear that, and people need to understand. Like, if if things are not coming not coming your way, or or things that you kind of you, you can't just wait for things to just drop out of the sky and just and then happen. Yeah. Sometimes, and oftentimes, you just have to get up and do it yourself. Yeah. And create create that lane, and so you're a living testimony of of what it is to do something on your own and 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 be quite successful. Thank you. I, I wouldn't like credit that like to myself, definitely like my village, like I was like afforded that cause you know, a lot of the sacrifices that my village made, so, like definitely that like collectively, yeah. Yeah, props you know, the cool props thing is you're just getting started. Like, Thank you. So yeah. yeah, can't wait to have you, oh. Yeah, we'll still be around yeah. five years' time. And <laughs> yeah. So when does the documentary for the pop for band aid? Oh, that would be cool. Yeah, because we'll tell about it. media invites, but we'll start like checking out. Oh, yeah. I was looking at my email and I don't know. I actually invited you, you guys. You did, you did, you did. Oh, you did, you did. Yeah, you, did. Yeah, yeah. you did. I told you to cancel that interview. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, you guys are also part of my rejection story. Oh! <laughs> hey, sorry, <laughs> hey, hey, we uh, asked uh, ask the call, we got you back. <laughs> I just want to say, how handle our Instagram account? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Jamie <I think> does. <laughs> 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 Uh, so, sorry, was, you had a question. Just thinking about like the industry, um, mm. like now that you look back and now that you're in the industry, are there, I imagine there are rules and etiquette in the industry. Yeah, I, I'm assuming that's the case. But when you look back, like, do you sort of reflect and think like for people coming in, these are sort of the do's and the do nots. And now that you've carved the path for yourself, is it easier to share that path with others that are wanting to come into the industry and that may not know the rules of the industry and etiquette and all that sort of stuff? I don't know, is that a thing? In the film industry? Oh, you know, yes. But I feel like the film sets that I've been on in New Zealand that are like Pacific are like really, like it's really good, it's chill, it feels like family. But that I really felt that when I jumped on, like the only American set I've been on, which is Chief of All. So when I was on that one, that was like, can't take photos of nothing or you get fired on the as soon as if like anyone catches you taking photos of the set, it was like, um, yeah, like I really felt it when I was like on Amer the American set, but here it feels like family vibes, yeah. Mm. That's mean. Mm. Have, have there any projects that you feel like, man, I don't want to do this, or you just feel like you said yes to it, like, oh my gosh, what am I doing this? You, that you jumped oh. on board and like, that you can't, <laughs> that you can't say on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I won't say anything. I'm probably like Just maybe. Just interview. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. There's like been one or two, but majority like mainly good. Like really okay. like had the best time. Yeah, it's awesome. You, you said something early on uh, in terms of uh, obviously diversity, and you talked about the kind of. Uh, the, the common themes around our, our Pacific people. What are, what are some of the things that you, you kind of are looking for there was kind of like, okay, I don't want to hear this, this is the same thing we hear all the time. What are some of the things that you were hoping or you wish you had heard something that was quite different from uh, the, the common issues that you hear or something that's, that we always talk about? Mm, do you know what I want to hear more about is like Pacific joy and like, um, yeah. Because... But also I like understand like, you know, there's a lot of stories surrounding like trauma and stuff. You know, it's just reflective of a lot of the experiences that a lot of like people have had. But I'd love to see what like, you know, um, stories rooted in like Pacific uh, joy and collective love would look like. That would be cool. 
Yeah. Mm. More stories surrounding so that. True. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just having a thought. No, but it's good. Like, so you, when you say about collective love, like in terms of obviously the joy in terms of our, our Pacific people. Um, so, what have been the common themes you, you've heard besides trauma? What, what's, uh, what's been the common theme? Like, oh, I've heard this time and time again, and then you feel like maybe there needs to be a different narrative, or just mm. what has been the, the one that that's kind of stands out the most? I don't know. Sure. I have to think on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys hear like common narratives or stories that you think are sort of played out or that maybe we focus too much on as a community and as a people? Mm. Uh, oh, I just uh, think of, yeah, obviously the, the obvious ones, sometimes racism, colonization. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Um, well, that's a, quite common that we kind of hear now. Um, not even privilege, uh, all, all, the, all those kinds of things. I don't know, I'm not too sure if you kind of get that in the mix and you kind of hear how people kind of have gone through that kind of um, those those issues, so to speak. Uh, but those are the ones I kind of hear uh, up in the air in, in recent times. Mm. It's a tricky thing, eh? Because it's like sometimes people need to get stuff off their chests, like to heal. And so maybe collectively as a people, maybe that's what we're in is like we're experiencing this season of like getting stuff off our chest and like being able to voice the things that our people have gone through. But yeah, just thinking about collective love and Pacific joy, that sounds really refreshing. Like, yeah, I, I do hear a lot about trauma and racism and all this stuff and a lot of focus on like what's wrong. And, you know, some of those are justified. Probably most of them are justified, but I think sometimes it's good to have a variety of perspectives and, you know, it's not all one tone of doom and gloom, but actually there are some lights that have come as a result of the trauma that have come through. It's brought us closer and helped us, I don't know, achieve yeah, something, oh, cool. talk about something, see something. Yeah. What comes to mind when you think of joy and collective love? Like one, thing, one thing came to mind immediately mm. and I thought of... Um, you know, the parades? Oh. oh. <laughs> because yeah. we yeah. were out in Ottawa. <laughs> Speaking of, oh, I don't want to get there. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> yeah. And I just thought, like, I'm, you know, I am Samoan ethnically, um, but I'm not very close to the culture. But, man, I was just so happy to see our people happy, to mm. see people, like, in the streets, waving a flag, dancing to music, laughing together, and, like, I don't watch rugby, so I don't watch the game or anything. But just to see the joy on their faces made me so happy. Mm. Um, so immediately when we were talking about Pacific joy and collective love, like that was the very first image was like people outside our house, like backed up in traffic, having a laugh, waving flags, singing, dancing, beautiful chaos. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you you would have been part of that because obviously you're living in Mangere, you would have seen all the, the yeah. Tosa Amor and the flags and the parades and the... Hey, I was right up in there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I loved it, and I love like I love the like those seasons. Honestly, like some of my favorite parts of the year. Yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, that's so interesting. I thought of something different, but that's so cool that you that's thought cool. of the parades. What did you think of? I was thinking of like collective love of like how like my cousins and stuff would look after or like give up their job to look after their grandparents. Mm -hmm. You know. Like, I think that's so honourable. So true. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. Yeah, yeah well, that's... Yeah, it's going to, that's that's going to a whole new level. Into, yeah, this. Mm. Oh, man, I was thinking about... Um, straight away, the image was Kongai. The mm. whole family. Mm. We were all laughing, having a feast. I just had one of my cousins um, have a surprise visit here from... France. He's been in France for the last ten years, and so he came over. So all the cousins came over, like my first cousins, like my brothers, and and we're just all jamming in the the living room, and we've got our children there, and we're all having a massive feed. We're all talking about the past, and then our kids are doing the same thing, and we're like, wow. I like so when I think of collective love or joy, that that was the image that came. But you brought up cool. an awesome point. 
Yeah, that's to the point, like sacrificial love, like we, the, the mm, one you yeah. talked about, man. To give up um, the stories. Yeah. Well, yeah, I can imagine the people who, like we t- we talked earlier on in terms of people who had like aspirations and dreams, and then all of a sudden, oh, I need to look after my mom or dad who's sick, and I'll just give that up. Well, not give it up, but just kind of park it to the side and just and just love on the the, the, the one who's sick or or yeah. the nana. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a deep one. Yeah. What do you think of Pete? What am I thinking of? I, I just automatically I just thought about family, family, just um, uh, in harmony. Obviously, you, your, your families have you all have ups and down, um, but I think just family and just together the, uh, a real tight knit family who's just enjoying each other's company. Yeah, very similar to the Konga A, but more so just a bit of a lot real, real hum, uh, harmonious. And so mm-hmm. everyone's on the, on the same page. Everyone's loving on each other. There's no strife. There's no. There's no, no, none of that in the picture. It's just all positive, positive vibes. Yeah, mm. it's cool. Yeah, yeah. That's that's, that's some stories to tell. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna mention your wife, but oh she yeah, doesn't bring you joy. Oh man, sure, hundred percent. Wow, wow. Oh, oh, she's not very happy. There's another part of the other part of the. Joke. <laughs> She's about to walk out. <laughs> that's the other part of joy, but uh, yeah, no, that's that's a cool one. That's um, but but um, it's, it's it's interesting that you um, obviously you you're wanting to hear more of that that side of the, of uh, our people, and it's not quite common. But it, uh, I find it quite surprising that it's not common that a lot of our people come in and to kind of you know seeing that kind of um, portrait or conveyed in, in the, some of the stories that our people are talking about or sharing. Yeah, yeah, because um. Oh yeah, I was just thinking about it the other day. My cousin, he's like 21, and he was he's from Australia, but he came over and he was like staying, and he was like we we're just having like just the best chats because I was like watching him. His dad had a stroke, and so his dad is not really mobile, and he has to carry his dad like from like his wheelchair to like the shower, like you know, like get him like feeds his dad, like all of that stuff. And I was just thinking, man, at like. 21 I was not doing that and I was just looking at him and I was just telling him I was like man that's so like it gave me like different perspective when I was just watching him do that I was like like this is like different love that isn't really well I feel like hasn't really been covered much in like western media but that's like real love too you know like that kind of stuff yeah I just thought it was real cool. It was like real inspiring. I just watching him take care of his dad, and he gave up going to uni for that. Jeez. It was interesting. Yeah. Because what, what what are your thoughts um, for all of us? What are your thoughts? Because I feel that that's um, that's common. That's not it's uncommon. Common. Yeah. That, that, yeah. That our people do, and it's a shame that no one's kind of kind of captured some of those those. Um, um, those two stories in terms of uh, our people kind of giving up certain things or sacrificing things that they want to do, and because they love someone s- mm. so much, yeah. But just, that's, that'd be cool if you can, ca- yeah. I don't know. It's I don't know something in the pipelines that you can. Well, but yeah, it'll be interesting to talk about it too, because like, I guess that's part of who we are as a people. That's mm. the norm, and then there's also that flip side, like that pressure of. Or what it creates for the young person <coughs> that ends up sacrificing, like what they're going mm. through, like because you know a lot of our elders tell us, "Don't ever put me in the restroom. It's your job to yeah. take care of me." And then, um, is it shameful, or will you look that different if you do put your elders mm. in the restroom? And but then for like I don't know, I haven't been like for me, I. I haven't been like I haven't had that tension of or that decision to um, think about having to put my parents in the in the rest home or whatever. Um, but I don't know what it'll be like because yeah, I don't know. It'll be an interesting conversation mm. to have because um, there's that shame versus um, I'm gonna sacrifice because I, I I wanna you know live out. Um, I want to spend as much time as I can while you're still here. So um, I think it's a conversation to have. Yeah. Because um, I, mm. I know 
um, there was this young person that we were working with and they got so much dreams, really entrepreneurial, um, but their whole family was having a meeting around um, who are they going to send to Samoa to look after the, the nana and, and this particular young person was the main person and then he he was like, oh, I don't know what to do, I'm quite stressed. And so it was like, how do you encourage them to like look at it as, oh man, this is an honour or, you know, your time will come. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, there's so much to think about and talk about. Do, yeah. do you think it would like work, um, like it works in the islands in a village system, mm-hmm. but if it comes a bit hard if when we're yeah. trying to do that here on our own, because we don't have that same support, support, support system. Support like system, eh? I feel like it's, yeah. it might be, there's the other component of that, I think, is like being in modern society where you're surrounded by people that have things and, you know, these glorious stories where they've worked hard and done something. Like, sometimes I question, like, does honour exist in modern society? Because mm. I think when it comes down to sacrifice and the honour of caring for an older person, you know, it's really hard for people that have been born here, at least from my own experience, where you have your own personal ambitions and it's like, you don't want to have to park that to look like there's not much honour and like not much glory. Sorry, it's this, it's this comparison between honour and glory. There's honour in looking after your grandparents, but there may not be much glory in it, whereas your personal ambitions there's glory in accomplishing your goals. And so I know, like, man, just you talking about that, Charles, like, you know, my wife's grandmother is blind. She lost her husband. They live alone. She lost her husband last year. And we live five doors down. We moved back to Auckland so that they could get to know our kids. And now we're at the point where she lives alone. Um, You know, she's trying to find family members to care for her, but she doesn't want to burden us because we have the two little ones. And we're like, oh, um, you know, maybe it's time for her to get in, go into a time in the village. But I hadn't ever thought about the concept that, like, where she, the generation that she comes from, like, that's not a thing. Like, that's why she's trying to find a family member yeah. to care for her because that's the way it's done for her. And I just, that guilt of, like, crap, here I am, like, nah, man, we got to find, like, I've got my own goals and things I want to do, things I want to do with the family and the kids and you know, here's this lady and my wife who was, you know, raised by her and my wife is trying to do the right thing and I'm, <laughs> I'm the voice in her You're head saying stinking like... stinking <laughs> yeah, I am, I am. And I'm like, oh, bro, the girl just hit me hard as you're too. Like, Charles, bro, you're killing me here. I'm going to cry. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that whole th- conversation about honour and glory, I think is another part of like why... Like the village being the other thing, like it's mm. I don't know. I'm just thinking aloud here, so I don't know. But I just thought that might be another component about why it's harder for us here in a, here in New Zealand to sacrifice compared to those who have a village. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, that's um yeah, that's deep. Um, that is deep. I think because we we're, we're in a Western country, Westernized and. And because, you know, obviously it's quite individualistic. Mm. We talked to be, oh, you know, you got to get this, you got to climb over this person, you got to do this, follow your dreams, your goals. Everything's quite individualistic. But obviously for us as, as, as Polynesians, as Pacifica, we're a collective. And so it, is, it can be quite, um, it's, it's a, it can be a clash, a clash in terms of, oh, I want to do this versus, oh, maybe I need to do this because I've grown up to, with the culture. This is how, what we do tradi- traditionally. So it is, it's a kind of be twix in terms of what are we, the decision we need to make. So yeah, man, I, I feel for you, man. Jay, that's, that's a hard one, bro. Because I know, you know you, 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 you're driven, you want to do things, and so, but also at the same time, oh, it's just, yeah, I guess we can, uh, you can look at when the time comes and see how, how it goes with, with you and your wife. You Reminds right, so you of that, like, knowing to do the right thing. Like, yeah. how do you know... Mm. You know, how do you know what the right thing is and how do you know when the right time is to do that right thing? Like, I don't know. It's just and often the right thing is the hardest thing to do sometimes, eh? Mm. Good one. Oh, man. It's funny, you just made me think about Brad and Solly, who are our producers. Um, 
Brad, you know, since he's been married to Sully, <laughs> they have a, an amazing village where they have a big family and great support. And for the longest time, I was really envious. Like, I just, it made me automatically not like Sully's family for ages because I was like <laughs> so jealous that they had the support and this love. And, you know, me and Sully have been on our own journey of like coming to understand, respect, and love each other. But for ages, it was just, I was so hurt that. You know, they had this amazing support system where they could have a beautiful family and everyone's involved. And like, I truly got a glimpse of what the village looked like. And then just being like, well, I don't have that. I can't have that. At least not in a traditional sense. Um, but yeah, I've, I've really come to appreciate the village and, you know, that whole concept of what a village means to people. And so I guess... For you guys, again, thinking aloud, like, has, have you ever had a time where you've had to make your own village or you've questioned your village or when did you come to appreciate the people that make up your village? I'll give that question to our guest. I think it's yeah because you did you did mention your village and so yeah yeah, yeah well, well tell us and it's a good question what, what Jay is saying tell us about your village it'd be nice to hear from from the horse's mouth in terms of your village and what does it mean to you and how how you call it a horse <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean you know what I mean yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm sorry <laughs> yeah so we could hear from from yeah what what your village um means to you as well. Yeah, um, man, they're like, they mean like everything to me, they're like at the, they influence like all my big decisions as well, um, it's just my family and, um, my close friends who feel like family, um, yeah, I think, sorry, what was the, other half of the question. oh just just what, what what do they mean to you and and obviously in the su support system and how do they help you and so forth yeah no i'm actually really blessed to have a really mean support system like uh like last year i had like back-to-back -back launches it was like honestly it was annoying but it was just like the timings of it it had to be like one week and then we had one week break and then another launch and then we had these other things. But my yeah. friends and my family, they pulled up to every single event. And, you know, they made sure that they had cleared their schedules to come and support. And that's just, like, shows, like, the kind of um, village that I have that, like, besides doing that, um, they're always, like, asking me how they can help um, with everything, really, that I jump on. And I know that... Um, I know that there isn't something that I ever take lightly, having a village like that, that are super supportive and loving. But, you know, um, with every village, they have their downfalls for sure. Mm -hmm. But I think um, one great thing is that we're kind of open to having those, like, hard combos and trying to find a way we can move forward uh, together, which is what has worked yeah it's cool i'm okay. generalizing but yeah and in, in general it's cool that's yeah. cool I li like you said you mentioned it but open communication because it's quite hard in, in pacific families to kind of be the communication lines are open and you can have you can talk about some of those difficult issues yeah, yeah. my next step is like i really want like all my family well, my my like parents i really want them to go to like therapy that would be cool like making it normal in our family, that would be really cool. Cool. Yeah. Oh man, that's that's interesting. It's <laughs> cool. Yeah, I just like. I feel like everyone, like you get a sore leg, you go to the doctors. Like, you sh people should go to therapy for like you know. I mean, I I think. Yeah. So 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 have you, have you tried it as well? Have you get you seen yeah. some? Yeah. Yeah, I think I've gone. Been going for like a year on and off. Try to do it like weekly, but yeah, just because I feel like I um like I know that there are like a lot of things that will have been passed down that I'm just trying to like unlearn and work through, 
and I want to be able to like find um, better ways to regulate my emotions in a healthier way. And I think therapy is like me because it was like really giving me the tools to help that. But also realizing that 99% of my problems are rooted from not having enough money. <laughs> I was like But yeah, it'll be cool like it's cool. Yeah. It, what how would how beneficial would it be for our parents or for your parents? Oh, uh, like so beneficial cuz I my dad was like um like he grew up I feel like in the staunch era, era like me and you don't cry. It's like that's weak to cry, and you don't talk about your emotions. Like that's not a thing. Um, so, yeah, like I've been like going back and forth in that with my dad for like eight. Like it's been like years where we're like slowly trying to like work through that. But I think it would be cool, like to get him into like therapy, um, just like because we just want to be like healthier. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Love that you mentioned therapy. Like I'm a big honestly. Get it. It's it's awesome. Um it's it's funny how sometimes like you just don't realise the source of some of these, you know, you don't understand why you do the things that you do or why you are the way that you are until someone asks the question and it just triggers you to like unpack and consider that there might have been a different perspective to it and <laughs> then it just blows your mind and you're like, Wow. I thought I was crazy this whole time, but actually there's a reason why you're doing this thing or you're thinking this thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm seeing a therapist fortnightly as well. Amazing. And I just think it's so amazing. And unlearning, like one of the things is like unlearning anger for me mm. because I harbored a lot of anger. And actually when I had to consider the perspective of the person I was angry at, I was like, oh, actually just because they did this, I just created this rule that like, because my parents couldn't be there for me at this moment that I wanted them to be. In my mind, I was like, they don't love me. Mm. I'm not important enough. But actually, they were busy working. They were doing all this other stuff. They had all these other kids to care for. But in my mind, I had made this rule. And so that one rule had governed all my future interactions with friends, with family, where like if they didn't come to something that was important to me or my family was like, oh no, nah, cut them off. Like oh. I don't mean I'm, I don't mean anything to them. So later. But actually everyone is busy. Everyone mm. has things and everyone has a reason if they can't be there. It's not that maybe there's someone that doesn't want to be there, but you know, everyone has a story and um yeah therapies help me just understand that everyone has a story and like it's on me to take the time to ask them mm -hmm. about their story to learn about them so yeah. i love that you mentioned therapy i i would be fascinated to see my parents go through therapy yeah. so i think that's a really cool goal that's, to have like yeah. how cool would that be i think that's so cool that um you go to therapy that's amazing and so cool that your like journey has been like it sounds like it's been going great yeah i sort yeah. of bounced around trying to find the right therapist but yeah. when you get the right one my goodness it makes a difference so oh yeah, mean I love, I love that what makes a good therapist is? um oh for you for me i think it's someone that's like takes the time one they have a really good grasp on just general life experience mm. but they can use their knowledge and the experience to like just poke a little bit further really safely mm. like and there's no judgment i never feel judgment and it's a weird thing to be like oh they don't make me feel judged but it's hard to describe i just the therapists that i have now just seem to ask the right questions she was very straight up and direct and she kept my eye on the ball like there'll be times where i knew i was trying to divert like i didn't want to talk about it so i'll try and like segue into something else and she would just keep me back on track and hold me accountable and I think yeah that gave me the respect that I had for the therapist and then having those really uncomfortable like squirming and like physically uncomfortable like she can see on my face that I'm really trying anything to avoid this conversation um, and yet she pushes but in a way that makes me feel safe 
if that makes sense. Like, I don't want to shut down. I know it's good for me because she's helped me understand that. Um, but yeah, I just feel like I'm not alone trying to understand this big black box of my history and my lived experience. Yeah. That's awesome. Fa- mm. Thanks to both of you for sharing that because, you know, we want to n- normalize these resources that are available to us, but you know for our people it's quite hard mm. and so like you know my question is like at what point do you sort of identify that you need that support and how do you go about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah how do you how do you, how do you go about it um Cerise, like do you want to answer that question <laughs> um how do I go over that? Oh, I think for me, how I went it was about forced it. upon. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, strongly hinted at. <laughs> oh. <laughs> My wife was the biggest, like, she was the biggest indicator of, like, she just knew that there was stuff that she could not help me with and no one else could help me with. Like, I really needed professional help. And I actually went through church to find, actually, it was a friend of ours, a very close friend who's part of my village. Like, mm. she She's has been, village. yeah, she's been a rock. Um, and so she, we have similar personalities and she was getting therapy and she was like, the stuff that is being said to her, she knows it applies to me. Mm. And so it was just that word of mouth, like she... My wife hadn't even told her, but she just made the recognition or, you know, just knew that it's working for her. She knows me well enough to know it would work for me. Mm -hmm. And she was like, push through and get the specific therapist that she's got. And she told me how she got it. She went through the church to get a referral. And so I did the same thing. And she kept me accountable. She pushed me to send the message. So not worry about wording at all nicely and all that. Mm. Um, And then, yeah, the connection was made and... Yeah, but I think getting to that point, was just, I was full of a lot of anger and resentment. I was just in a dark space where, like, even going to church, like, I was resentful to God. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, ultimate darkness. Fortunately, I had the right light next to me, which was my wife, who pointed me in the right direction. And then it was just connections from there. The village at play, man. Man. Sweet. Yeah. That's so buzzy. because. It was like my village as well. One of my best friends had been going to seeing that therapist. And I just, because we had a lot of conversations, she was so open about it. And um, she was like, you need to go. I was like, I don't know what to talk about. She was like, just go like, and just try it out. And I went to my first session and I really didn't know what I was like getting myself into. But I walked away feeling so much lighter. And I was like, man, I want to do this every week. And... It's been the best journey. Like, I love it. So cool. Yeah. But Man. that's so cool. Yeah. Village, yeah. <laughs> See the importance cool. of, like, the people at your village. You know? Man. Yeah, it just helps reinforce the idea of, like, just those relationships. Like, you just never know when the right people will help you out. Like, you can't always be in control of everything. Like, you can't always help yourself. And sometimes you need those people around you who know you well enough to help you when, yeah, you're mm. stuck. It's cool. Interesting cool. parallels, eh? Yeah, fuzzy. It's so also, cool. It's awesome that you guys. Yeah, I, I, I commend you guys for doing that and then just finding the right help. I think it's that's awesome. Um, but just, I was just, just wondering because I know you said something early on, um, Teresa, in terms of uh, weight, like carrying some the, the weight. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you obviously you're seeing uh, uh, in terms of therapy, but. What was the, what, can you describe that weight for us in terms of is it expectations or what what is it that the weight in terms of the f- um, that you felt that you had to carry? Hmm, that's so interesting. I think it's like I don't know if it's like being a child of a migrant thing, but it's like or like for me and like my sister, it's it's like making sure that you're realizing the sacrifices of your parents. That's kind of like the weight that like I'm talking about and also like making sure that you can do it in a certain period of time like yeah because then uh, it's like you don't want to watch your parents need to work like these like crazy hours or laborous jobs or whatever I'm speaking from my experience anyways it's not 
um, while you're getting to work from like an office or getting to do what you love. So I think the pressure of like needing to get to a certain point where they don't need to do that anymore. That's kind of what I was talking about when I was saying the way, yeah. I feel like um, when you get like hit roads of like failure and stuff and it sets your journey back um, and you have to travel a bit longer, like, you know, the time thing also becomes like a weight because it's like you're not just doing this for yourself. Like if it was time, if the time thing was like for yourself, then that would be all good like for me. But because it's like you're trying to, change things in your family and stuff the time thing is like it becomes a a burden yeah does that make sense yeah, no, 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 that, 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 that like, makes absolute sense yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man okay jeez um it, I don't, yeah it makes it makes perfect sense in terms of the weight and the, i can imagine a lot of people holding that weight like yourself and and for all of us in here there's specific different weights that we kind of carry Obviously, in terms of expectations and, and the pressure, and uh, and just trying to achieve things because the, the love you have for your parents, not what, and, and grandparents, so forth. Yeah. Um, and obviously, the the therapy has kind of been kind of kind of hopefully, hopefully this kind of kind of um, lightened that 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 weight. Mm. Um, and so, in, so in terms of um, in terms of our people, uh, what are some of the what are you, what are you seeing? What are you gauging from our people in terms of some of us who are holding that, that, that weight or carrying some of those weights, whatever it is, what do you think needs to be done besides therapy? And what, what are some other ways or avenues that uh, people can try to like, okay, I don't have to carry this weight besides the village and so forth. What, what, what do you think? Um, yeah, what I, are the ideas that you could... Um, about part? jogging. <laughs> oh, so, besides that weight. <laughs> this time you say, wait, I forgot about my love and... Well, yeah, carry on. So it's just... <laughs> So I'm joking, yeah. Um, <laughs> nah, like, I I don't know of any ways that, like, individuals or any things that individuals can do. I think it's a more like a system thing. Mm. And that is, like, systemic action. I mean, you know, like, change. Like, that needs to, like, take place. Um, yeah. I feel like that will, like, alleviate so many problems that we have in society is, like, yeah, the leveling the the, the ground, field, the, field, yeah. <laughs> the battlefield. That would be a great start. Yeah. yeah, but that see, that's not like on the individual to do. That's a system change. Yeah, that's cool. That, that's cool. That, yeah, that, yeah. I, I, I get that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Systems always like an interesting one, eh? Because it's like, where does the first step start? when you're thinking about like systemic change. Like I just had a thought about how like, in my mind at least, for society, like the goals of society should determine the systems we use. Mm. So like if we're looking at systems that don't work for us, like what does that say about the goals for our society? Like what does our society want? Like what are the goals for our current society? And then if we're wanting to change it, like how do we go about changing the system? Is it changing the, the bits of the system that don't work? Or is it like scrapping what we have and starting from scratch and like rebuilding that way? Again, I'm thinking aloud, so just open discussion, whatever thoughts come to mind for, for everyone. I don't want to... <laughs> Say it. I rock the, I don't rock the boat. I don't want to rock the boat. No, I think I put the system pissed off, like... Yeah. <laughs> Just everything that's happening and where we at and when you sort of meet people, like young people I'm working with, they have been through the system and the system's so shit. Mm. It pisses you off. Mm. And it's like, okay, at one point that we're gonna keep on complaining about the system and um what are we gonna do to change it? And like I don't know. I'm just at a stage now it's like Stuff them. Let's go do our own thing. Let's go. We need to create stuff for us, for us, or by us, for us, and and then at some some point, gotta try to mobilize our people to really 
I don't know, make some noise or otherwise we're just gonna keep on letting these piece of shits <laughs> um, <laughs> you know um put up barriers for us and I I don't wanna talk up I don't wanna give them the power like or to clouds, control yeah. you know or the cloud yeah. to control us. It's like <laughs> Yeah. So I don't know. I was listening this morning about Seymour's policy around like uh, they're trying to do this traffic system around putting um, making sure kids turn up to school and that um, families will start getting fined no. hey. and I was going fuck these guys are, how disconnected are you yeah. from the actual reality of what's going on in our community and we allowed that to happen <laughs> you know what I mean so when we're talking about this I like, hey, go you know what? We we're gonna go do our own thing. We stuff mm. these guys. Uh, and any of you young people I used to work with in uh, youth justice, give me a call so I can send you the addresses of these politicians <laughs> so you can do some ram reads. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I just killed my mouth shut. Woke up and chose violence. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's, it's all, it's all, it's good, just so you know, we don't condone that. <laughs> <don't, we're> <laughs> no, but at the same time, these are just thoughts. I'm trying to figure out how I can articulate like some of the, these thoughts I'm having <laughs> and how I'm feeling at the moment. And so at the moment, it's just like, you know what? We got to just keep on, tri- you know, mobilizing our people, keep on doing what we're good at and not giving them the control or like and that that starts from how we live how we do community how we tell our own stories um how we serve each other um it's about holding each other accountable like stop complaining if you ain't gonna do shit bro hey we got too many um social media activists mate that talk about it and they do shit about it Bro. Oh, sorry. <laughs> hey, man, <laughs> Pascal Lima, Pascal Lima right there. Shoot the fire to me. <laughs> sure, yeah. I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> so, Reese, what, what have you done to me? <laughs> what have you done to me? Uh, but, um, I, 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 bro, I, I hear you loud and clear. And uh, that's why we need more, Therese. We need more people like yourselves who do mm. in, in, this, in this industry, in this space. 100% what you're saying. Um, if the system's not working for us, then we need to get up off our, our asses and start doing things, doing things for ourselves, create those lanes. Look at it. We just had, just, and you had last week, was it two weeks ago, Pacific Hall of Fame. Yo. Michael Jones just said, hey, let's just do it ourselves. We're not going to yeah, get They had to. And so, yeah, instead of complaining, say, oh, well, we can't, there's always be that. We're just going to get up, like you said, like you, like you did. You just get up, you just got up and say, hey, I'm just going to do it myself. I'm going to pay my own way. I'm going to create it. If the system's not working for me, you know what? Damn, forget about the system. Let's just do it. Let's just create our own space, our own lane. And get on with it instead of going. Oh, uh, I can't do it, and complain. Mm. Uh, the, the longer we sit and complain, like you said, there's social. There's a lot of social media ad, ad, um, activists, and and uh, we can talk all all we want. And but if there's no action, it's it's pointless. And so I commend what you what you do, sis, and, and the guys and, and all the other guests who've come and who are actually doing things, actually doing things in the midst of adversity, and proving to the system and to the world. Hey, you can block us here and there, but we're going to overcome it. We're going to bust through those barriers, and this is how we do it. Mm-hmm. And we need more people like yourself who are standing in the gap saying, hey, we're going to push through through, and do it ourselves. And, and along, the, along the journey, people are influenced. People are excited. People are like, wow, we can actually do that? And so kudos to you, sis. Uh, but yeah, I, I feel your anger. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I think, yeah, it's, uh, I, I, I think like you're right. Just a you frustration, but it's like, Okay, what can I do? And yeah. the lane that I'm going, just gonna make sure this generation will serve me, man. Like keep on being signposts that mm. that's that pe- that pathway is not f- you know wasn't meant for you. It might be set up for you, but that's not for you. This you keep on. This is what the people done before. You know that came before you. You can be whatever God's created you to be. So. Yeah, sorry. Let's talk about these cards. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm so wait, sorry, can sis. I ask one question? Yeah. But um, that's so, yeah. 
But mm. what about like the people who are in like um, positions where they they just like way too exhausted from like work from trying to keep up with like food prices, petrol prices, like you know, they don't have the energy yeah. to try and fight back because they're just already yeah. like tied down and failed by the system. Like, so you know? we've got to empower yeah. the next generation of community leaders to really look after us. Because um, at the moment, we're like pointing fingers mm. and they were like, oh, she'll be all right. And and we, I've, I think we've got to pick our battles, pull our resources together and start like doing what, they used to do like just serve yeah. one another. Let that be contagious. Help each other mm. build their villages so they know who their support networks are, um, and get them to a place. Because you know when you lose that, when you get fatigued and you lose that that purpose, it just takes um, someone to serve you or that piece of joy, that collective love to really empower you again and. You know, mm. our people at the moment right now, there's so many stresses up here that's disabled us from living. And if we are able to help one another take one stress away, a few the next stress away to really get them to start thinking again, really help each other like just you know, move forward again and just remind each other, man, remember who we are. <laughs> We're not supposed to be the tail, you know. But anyway, that's just me. But that's easier said than done. But I think if we have more of these conversations and at least of me being frustrated, like how do you how do you use that frustration? Um yeah. in a positive way, you know? Mm. It'd be interesting to see if there is like a society out there in the world that has worked for the people where like you know, mm. where the system they've created works mm. and how they got to that point. Wakanda. <laughs> Wakanda. <laughs> 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 we just need the world's rarest um, technology. <laughs> yeah. I guess we could all agree that the system's kind of broken. Well, yeah. Sorry, I, I don't know if that answered your question. No, no, I was just, I mean, I don't even know. Yeah. I was just wondering, you know. Because there's a lot of support out there. It's just how to... Yeah, it's, it's a big paradox though because like some of the supports and like even creating our own system would it would exist within the a system. wider system yeah yeah so it's like so we would manipulate the system they've been manipulating us for years <laughs> 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 sorry <laughs> I forgot we're on camera <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is hard case, man. But, but yeah, there's cards far out. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about these cards. Sis. Yes, Lalanga. Do you guys want to pick a card? Okay. okay. Explain how, yeah, because I don't know how it card. works fully. Okay, so um, Lalanga in someone uh, means to weave, but it also means to unravel, like, you know, like Lalanga. Um, and that's kind of like the intention behind the game when I wanted to like find more ways to connect people. Cause I think connecting people um, and through connection that you can alleviate so many societal issues. Mm. And I just was like, man, if you can just find a way we can connect more people to each other and to themselves, I'm sure like, yeah. It just erases so many different things. Um, so that's kind of like the purpose of the game is um, using like Talonoa to connect people. There's five different levels to the card game and each level caters to a different depth of conversation. So level one is kind of like surfacey level questions. Level two is like um, proverbs, like Pacific proverbs and then it goes like deeper and deeper and so on and so on. Yeah. And so it's five different levels. And I was like, it'll be cool. Like for you guys to just pick one card 
like out of the deck. Level five. <laughs> level five. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Super Saiyan level. <laughs> now, do you guys want to? Yeah. Okay. Just go. <clears throat> oh man. So like it's a point system game. Okay. So if level one is worth one point, level two two points, like so the the higher you go, the more points you can get. Oh. I was just like you guys can just pick like one card each. Mm. You need like a certain. This is gonna sound like such a stupid question, but do you yeah. need a certain number of points to win? Or is winning not the point? It's just no. <laughs> That's a really great question. Um, no, it's just whoever has the most points. Oh, yeah. Because like some people will be like, oh, I don't want to go and pick a card from level five. I feel safer picking a card from level one. Gotcha. And that's fine. It's just you might not win. <laughs> just means if you got the lowest points, you'll stink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so get a number hey. five. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't, I don't be laughing and crying after this. Because the card, I just like crying. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is level one, two, three, four, and five. I should have put them in order. Um, feel free to pick a card from whatever deck you guys want. Jeez, man. Hey, man. Let's do it, man. We have to pick different levels, so. <laughs> For levels, eh? Okay. I'll see which one you guys pick first. I'm curious about the five. Like, yeah, I go, just, bro. Oh, yeah? See. Sharp, that's the one. I'm really curious about five. one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got five. I'll try four. Okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll go down the numbers there. I'll, I'll, I'll go three then. All right. The yeah. top? Yeah. Okay. Who's first? Okay, level three. <laughs> Level three, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll start the ball rolling. What comments do people say in passing to Pacific Islanders that are actually insulting? Oh, that's a good one. Oh. This should be level five, eh? <laughs> <laughs> level three. <laughs> you can pick another, you can pick another. If oh, you don't I, think I think it's good. Okay. I think it, yeah, I think it's quite, um, comment, what comments do people say in, in passing to Pacific Islanders that are quite insulting? Oh, do I say this? Or do they just... Oh, just you I, can answer it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I answer it. Answer. Yeah. We'll answer it. Oh, yeah, answer. oh, I answer it. Oh, your sure <laughs> points. But they, it is like, you can open the floor to like, uh, if they want to answer Oh, okay, well. okay, cool. Uh, for me, um, I've heard uh, boy. Hey, boy. I've heard it several times. Someone said it to me several times. Hey, what's up, boy? Hey, boy. Good, good boy. Oh, uh, this is this adult is oh hey good boy, good boy no but yeah yeah no but uh, I heard that good boy or oh, just um, uh, things like uh, oh just randomly oh coconut mm. I heard coconut yeah coconut uh, which is interesting because not not from our Balangi people but from other people from, they've said yeah. coconut oh yeah 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 you yeah, coconuts. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, but that's, yeah, that's I think that's the main two, the main two that I've just recently or mm. a few years. I ago. think the most famous one would be monkey. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, yeah, yeah, coconut and and boy. Damn. Yeah, which is yeah. We'll unpack that after. When was the last time you felt alive? Whoa. I can't talk about it on camera. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's your village. You tell us anything. Nothing's off the table, Wolves. <laughs> nah. When was the last time you felt alive? Oh, <clears throat> oh man. I think. No. Because I didn't have to unpack what does alive mean to me. I don't know. I'm thinking about. Oh. Hmm. Interesting question. Um, and that's how I interpret it? Yeah, it's however you interpret it. Yeah. I'm just thinking about the cruise. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so I was on a family <laughs> cruise, but mm. I think about not having to think about. 
because that before I got on the cruise, in my mind, there was so many stuff happening. Everything was fast paced. But when I was on the cruise, it took me ages just to unwind. It took me like two days just to center my thoughts. And then I went to, then I f was able to fall asleep any time of the day on the cruise. I felt most alive mm. being asleep. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. That's deep, eh? How crazy <laughs> is that? <clears throat> I was just thinking about the question when people are like, what do you do for a living? And yet, when you felt most alive was when you weren't doing what Anything, you do for yeah. a living. When you weren't doing your regular nine to five. And it's like, how many times in our life do we ever feel alive? Mm. Yeah, probably in the family scene, that's what I'm thinking of. And crazy. Being, cool, man. Yeah. I know. It's heaps to get you in there. Yeah. Man, I love this. Man, this is man, awesome. Man. I mean, I say that now. I have my card. <laughs> Can we get some close up? <laughs> oh, here we go. Have the freedom to ask any question. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's well, a wild card. Wait, you should do this one. Sorry, I'm going to pick it for you. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, that. Oh, did this? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oof. Text, message, call a relative That you haven't reached out to in a while And tell them you love them I have done this just recently Did you? Like within the last 48 hours Oh, cool and it was to my mum oh. I hadn't told her that I loved her in a while And part of the therapy that it's helped me understand Is that I have so many issues And so much anger that I have to unlearn That's toward my mum and um, every time we talk to her on the phone, like, I just get angry. Even though the words are polite to each other, like, every now and then I find myself making snarky remarks or jokes, jokes that, like, really, subconsciously, I'm having, I'm, like, taking digs at my mum. And I've done this for years, but only just noticed it recently mm -hmm. and understood why recently. Um, and so I did reach out to her recently and apologised and said... I can told her that, you know, even though I have a lot of this anger and we're going to talk, she's, we're moving in together in like less than a month. So oh. she's moving in to be closer to the grandkids. My brother's moving up from Wally. We're moving into this home together. So I'll have a village, I guess, mm. on my own. Um, but I knew that part of it was like, I'm going to have to have this uncomfortable conversation with my mum. And I tried really hard to be positive on the phone. And then I just lashed out with this stupid comment and I could see that she was hurt. And so afterwards, yeah, I sent her the text, apologized, <clears throat> told her that I loved her. And um, what really broke my heart was that she was like, she knows, she knows that I've been angry at her. And I was like, this whole time I thought I was being subtle and I didn't even realize sometimes. And it just really cut me that she knew that I was angry at her. She doesn't understand why, because I'm still trying to understand why. Um, but yeah, that's something recent. What do I have to do one right now? I'm not. I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. I'm like, oh, you're good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That's cool. That's cool, yeah. man. Thank you for sharing that. That's so, so cool. Yeah. I remember um, picking that card before, <laughs> and I, <laughs> someone came to mind. It was a family member that I hadn't talked to just no I was but annoyed. And then when that came out, that was the first person I thought of, and I gave love EG. And then <laughs> it was my sister, and then she goes. Uh, did you hit your head or something? <laughs> and then we had this mean ass funny conversation and then we were talking of that. So these are thanks to the cards. Oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah, this that's cool. awesome, awesome. Thanks for playing. Can we read a <laughs> proverb? What? Yeah. Does it number two? Yep. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, I'm gonna mess this up. Hawaii. He po ina kai uli, kai koo aohe, hina pukoa. Hopefully I said that right, but though the sea is deep and rough, the coral rock remains standing. What does this mean to you? Hmm. I know, I think about a planted tree. Though the waves calm, you're still solid. And 
Right? Sometimes the sea might be everything runs smooth, but when the waves come, if your foundation's strong, um, yeah, it'll be solid. So trying to figure out what my foundations are. Yeah, hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> Shadows. That's cool. Oh, sorry. No, no, that just it's just a, a, such a cool like quite just thinking about their proverb and immediately it just made me think about how the sea can be a beautiful but treacherous thing and mm-hmm. like we often don't see what sits underneath mm-hmm. it and just how coral rock may not be the most beautiful thing in the sea it may not have good days but at the end of the day you know it remains mm-hmm. and sometimes you know, maybe we could learn a thing or two from being coral rock that remains. Nice. Yeah. Man, I love this. I need to get some of this. No, I, cool. that's so cool. Like how I always feel like, like I've heard like people read the same proverb like a million times, but like everyone, I've never heard people say the same answer. Like mm-hmm. they always interpret it so differently. I think that's the point of like the proverbs. That, like, yeah, that's so cool. No, that's cool. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. These are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And so initially when you wanted to start these cards, it was to connect and to sort of unravel, dig deep. Yeah. Yeah. Mainly like connect people um, from different, just all walks of life, different generations. I was just thinking more so family and stuff. That's cool. Uh, What's the best feedback that you've ever got from these cards? Oh, or some highlight that you've received. I yeah, actually, one of the ladies that um, she runs like a program up north. Um, she said two um, gang members from their like rival gang members um, had played the card game, and it was like the first time that they were able to sit in the same place and have mutual respect for each oh. other. I thought that was so, yeah, that was so cool to me because I was like, man, that's so, um, yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Another one was, um, oh, I don't know. I don't have to think on it because I've had some pretty, like, yeah. I mean, I've had my own friends message me saying that they played the game until like 4 a.m. and they've been with their partners for like years and they were able to find out things about their partners that they never knew before. Um, And that was like coming from like people I knew very well. So I was like, man, that's so cool. Like, I mean, my family and my loved ones are able to like have that experience with it, but also like um, people I don't even know, which was really cool. Yeah. That's awesome. And I can speak on behalf of uh, some of the, uh, one of the men's groups that we were part of, um, Johnny used us at um, Brown Pride for Year the Boys. Shout out to Year the Boys, and it was an amazing uh, conversation starter. And these are men, young men sitting around the table, um, able to, you know, um, tell a noir but also go deeper. So, um, Shout out to you and your cards. I'm just thinking about the rival gang, so you might have to put some red in there, move some black and some yellow, just to make it gang neutral. Just in case. Uh, where can the where can people find your cards? Um, we are stocking in a few stores. Um, our poetic mm. store has some Moana Fresh, four shell four shells in um the city. And I'm missing another store. And uh, Oysters and Moon, they're like um, online. And then we've got it on our website, uh, which will be in the, I mean, it's just lalanga.co. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah. Well done, sis. That's Thank so cool. you. Um, but I will definitely say that, um, you know, village effort for sure. Um, Gabby Manu was like a big part of it. And, um, the early phase of like how um she's like one of my best mates and 
she was um her background is marketing so we used to flat together and she would just would spend weekends like um planning prep and she'll just give me the rundown of like things that I just had no idea about like marketing stuff that I just and business stuff I just no clue and she was such a major part in like helping that and um Laite Mappa, she wrote the health and safety plan to the card game. Um, Lauren Whipper, she did the design. Amazing, amazing designer. Um, yeah, so um, shout out to them because it wouldn't be possible without them. And J.R. McKenzie, who, there's a lady called Sylvia. She, um, I'd gone through like 10 people trying to pitch this to them and they were like oh sorry we don't really fund business or like startups and I was like yeah I heard that like a million times but when I talked to Sylvia from J.R. McKenzie it was like only a matter, matter of months before they were able to fund um the long out which got like my first a uh, lot of cards so yeah well I just so, yeah amazing people that's so cool Maro lover, Maro lover, so force us. It is your producer and an entrepreneur. So I think uh, it's, 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 uh, what a great mix uh, in terms of what you're doing, in terms of um, the people. And, and I can guarantee, uh, like Jay, uh, like um, Charles will say, we played it with the boys. Uh, the year the boys said uh, Brown Pride, and just uh, it was it was a good time of discussion, but also a good talent. But more so, uh, a lot of the men's were kind of a lot of the, a lot of the guys were kind of kind of the barriers kind of went down. Mm. And we're able to kind of share um, heartfelt um, stuff, meaningful stuff as well. So it's, it's, it's been a pleasure, an absolute pleasure to talk to, talk with you and you sharing a lot, uh, a little bit or little snippets or glimpses of of, of your life um, with us and and the story thus far. I know the journey is just mm. just just starting, and so sis, uh, just you. commend you. We're going to commend you and just wish you all the best with your endeavors in twenty twenty four. But yeah, and carry on, carry on the amazing work that you do and. And but yeah, and we are. You thought you did, you've talked about village uh, a lot tonight, but hopefully we are part of your village as well, and we want to support yeah. you as well, and and, and lift you and praise you while, while you make those those big things and success as well. So, Maro lover, thank you very much. Man. I'll save you for last, but yeah, um, just thank you, sis. Uh, really encouraging. Um, just hearing your story, a like, glimpse of your story, because I know there's more. But um, I'm just really encouraged because, like, you know, all of us got young daughters and um, I know, I don't want to put that pressure on you, but you're, you're that type of wahine tour that really making waves and um, I know you're doing it for yourself and your family, but there's a lot of um, young'uns out there that possibly will look at, um, look at you and think, man, if she can do it, I can do it. And so, um, yeah, I'm just really encouraged by um, all the stuff that you're doing. Um, I love the attitude around um, just your persistence. And you know what? Okay, I'm just going to keep on going. And, and you, you find a way. You're navigator. You're modern day navigator. <laughs> and um, and <laughs> you've initiated some com- different topics um, tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever talked that frustrated on the, on the podcast, good, but nah, um, really refreshing. Um, you know, we'll continue to cheer you on from afar, and um, yeah, as Pete said, you got some brothers on um, on this side that um, waiting for some more invites, and they will turn up. <laughs> <laughs> One of us will turn up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, shots. Just keep on doing yeah. what you're doing. Um, yeah, honestly, I just think it's so awesome to to have you here and to learn some new things about you and like just get a glimpse behind some of the amazing things that you've done. And, you know, you talked a bit about the sacrifice of your parents. And I think that's one of the things that I'll take away from tonight is like, I feel like I understand sacrifice a little bit better because of your perspective on it. Um, and so I guess my final question is um, when you think about honouring your parents, like what are your bigger future goals and 
you know, the goals in particular that um, you will strive for to honour your parents the most? Like, how can you honour your parents the most? Yeah, that's so... What a great question. Um, damn. Honestly, w- one of the biggest things that they actually want besides is literally just like, they always say it, it's like to put God first. Like, that's literally all they care about. I do want to like have a better relationship with God and I want to like be on that journey more that's definitely like at the top of my list um and yeah I was like just thinking back to what I was saying with like the rejection um story and needed to got to say that like amongst that like a key thing that kept me going was definitely my faith and um that's honestly what got me through for real for real for real um yeah prayers crazy when you're like deep in it like Mm -hmm. um just things change and even when like everything around you like it doesn't seem possible but like when you add like for me in my experience when like you add like god to the equation it just changes everything so yeah definitely want to be on that journey more for all um in terms of honouring my parents, I think just being true to myself. And, yeah, because I think everyone has, like, their different uh, God-given purposes that are not necessarily in line with what your parents want. And that's okay. Because we're meant to do, yeah, that's kind of like, I feel like we're meant to do what, yeah, I'm just going to end it there because I feel like I'm rambling, but oh. that's kind of like, yeah, where I'm at at the moment. It's cool. Yes. Yeah. Well, oh, that's cool. And I, and I guess the reason I ask is just because I think there's, even though you didn't mention your faith, I think in parts of your journey, mm. like we can kind of get a feeling for it, like in terms of like that faith has played um, a role in it. And so I just think it's awesome. <clears throat> that you've been able to come on this journey, build your fire, um, share some of it with us, and you demonstrate like a real self awareness in terms of like where you stand, not just in your life, but like in terms of like the generations, like understanding where you've come from, your parents' journey in particular, mm-hmm. and it's really cool to see how that strengthens your resolve moving forward. Um, so just really cool to see, and I'm just grateful that we've been able to have this time to share with you. So, yeah, thank you so much. No, oh, like, thank thank you all for, like, holding space for me and making me feel, like, safe to have these convos and also providing the space not just to me but, like, so many other, like, Pacifica people. It's so cool. Like, big, big fan of what you guys do. It's amazing. Yeah, thank yeah. you, sis. Or if you can do us a favor, maybe you can pray for us. Let's, oh, let's get into this. That's a big step. <laughs> That's one of the hard <laughs> <laughs> levels. <laughs> 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 yeah, thank you. Uh, no, no, it, it has been an absolute pleasure to have you tonight, and, and yeah, thank you, and thank you once again, Fafta Tere Lover. Since every guest that comes on, we always give them a caricature, a bit of a cartoon of how we envision them to be. Um, so this is on behalf of the, the Mandate team. This is for you, sis. Oh, thank you so uh, much. A bit of champagne to celebrate your successes. And the caricature. Thank you very much. Oh, this is so cool. Thank you. Oh, I love it. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I don't think I've even been given a drawing of myself. This is the oh, first hey, time. Oh, good. Uh, but sis, is there anyone that you can think of that would be ideal to come on the podcast? You think, man, this this person would be perfect to come on. Samson Rambo, yeah, he'll be great. You guys need to get him on. Cool. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Have you guys had JP? JP. JP. Fuliaki. No, 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 no. He'll be good. Mm. He has a cool story. Cool. Yeah. Remember that name, guys. Yeah, JP and Samson. Yeah, awesome. Cool. Cool. Awesome, man. Absolute pleasure once again, sis. If you go, uh, just we always give the guests the last words. Any any last words of encouragement for the viewers and listeners that you want to say? 
Nah, we'll share. I, I feel like I've said enough. I'm just, I'm grateful. I'm just like super grateful to be here. Yeah. Ah, awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please don't forget to subscribe um, and also like and comment. Look forward to your well thought out comments. And once again, brothers, as usual, refine, unlock, and, and take, take charge. charge. Mandate.